Hello, this is Stefan with Liquidity, and today I'm going to do something a little bit different from most of my videos. I want to compare a dead language, a Germanic dead language, to several modern Germanic languages. See if they have a lot in common or if they're completely different. So for this purpose, I'm going to compare the Gothic language, the language of the Goths. When I say the Goths, I don't mean those kinds of Goths. I don't mean Gothic cathedrals or even the Gothic script, even though they kind of harken back to the Goths. I also don't mean Gothic novels, as in Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and, and then some other novels that could be referred to as Gothic. That kind of Gothic is used in homage to the original Goths, who were a little different. Uh, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the original Gothic language, uh, which died many centuries ago. Loquidity. And for the purpose of this video, I'm going to look at just one particular text that has been translated into many, many, many different languages. In fact, this may be the most translated text that you will find in the world, in, well, on planet Earth at least. And that would be the Lord's Prayer, or in Latin it's called Pater Noster, or in German we call it Vater Unser. So I will compare Old Gothic to actually early modern English, to modern English, to modern German, and also to Swedish, and there's a reason for that. For the Gothic part, I'm going to use this book, An Introduction to the Gothic Language, by William Bennett. And uh, for the other things, well, there are plenty of resources. In fact, I've been practicing Swedish on Duolingo for a while. Um, so my Swedish is going to be a little weird. My Gothic's probably going to even be weirder, but at least there's nobody alive who speaks the language who's going to correct me, I think. But you never know on YouTube. You never know. There may be somebody who will comment like, oh, this is not how we Goths speak. We will claim that Goths still all alive or something like that, but that's okay. Everybody's entitled to an opinion. So first, a little bit about the Goths. Uh, so we don't know that much about the early history of the Goths, but most of the things that we do know about them or that we think we know about them are really from Greco-Roman sources. Uh, and uh, the Roman Empire had quite a few interactions with, uh, with the Goths. So most sources say that they're probably from southern Scandinavia. They came over into what is today Poland, Eastern Europe, East Central Europe. And it seems like they spend a lot of time in different parts of especially Eastern Europe as semi-migratory people in a way. Settling down in some places, farming, herding, making a living surviving in different places, mingling with many different kinds of people. They were as far east as what is today Ukraine. There are some sources that claim that there were Gothic-speaking people in Crimea, actually, on the peninsula of Crimea in southern Ukraine, up until the 17th century. So it is possible that some Gothic dialects actually did survive up until the 17th century. One interesting thing about the Goths is also that they are an example of the Eastern Germanic group of languages. So Germanic languages consist of North Germanic languages, basically all yes, Scandinavian languages, West Germanic languages, English is part of that, German is part of that, Dutch, Flemish is part of that, Yiddish is part of that, and then the East Germanic languages, all of which disappeared. So in the fourth century, the Goths accepted Christianity, and I don't know if he was the first bishop of the Goths, but one of the bishops of the Goths in the 4th century, Wolfila, or Ulfila, as he's sometimes referred to, uh, took it upon himself to write down the Gothic language, to record the Gothic language, to actually translate especially religious texts into the Gothic language. And he actually created a new alphabet based mostly on the Greek alphabet but also the Latin alphabet kind of a mishmash between those two and uh, what we know about the Gothic language today is because basically thanks to Ulfila or Wolfila 
the, the bishop of the Goths in the 4th century. Later on, the Goths did come into the Roman Empire, uh, sometimes with the consent of the Romans, sometimes not with the consent of the Romans. Uh, in fact, the Romans used a lot of Goths as mercenaries, but they also had enslaved a lot of Goths and a lot of other Germanic people. So a lot of Germanic people were already in the Roman Empire, either, either as mercenaries or as slaves or uh, under other circumstances. They came into the Roman Empire, they moved westwards with along with a lot of other Germanic tribes uh, in that time period. So the Goths uh, wound up in particular in two different places, what is today modern day Italy and also modern day Spain. They also spent time in Southern France or what is today Southern France, Portugal, of course, to the, the Iberian Peninsula, basically. And the ones that ruled Italy for a short period of time those are the ones who we refer to as Ostrogoths, who were the Eastern Goths, and the ones who were in mostly Spain, but also Southern France and, and Portugal. Those are known as the Visigoths, the Western, the Western Goths. Some people think that the Spanish region of Catalonia actually is named after the Goths, Gothalonia. I don't know if that's true or not, but there are some words in the Spanish language that are derived from, from Gothic words, like for instance, guerra and guardia. Those are actually from of Gothic origins. Of course, Spanish adopted words from all kinds of different languages, also a lot of Arabic words, right? Uh, and for the most part, of course, Latin and then also Greek. So this is a transcription into a Latin alphabet, which also includes letters that today are represented in the English language with TH. But uh, Old English, Anglo-Saxon also use these letters, and this is just used to represent these. So I'm going to do my best to say the, 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 the uh, Lord's Prayer in Old Gothic, in the 4th century Gothic dialect, if you will. Attarunza thuin himinam venai namothain quimmai theodinassus thains verdai vilia thains sve in himina ya annar erdai chleif unsaranna thanna sintainan gif uns himadaga ya fled uns thattai shullons si jäämä, svasve ja veis afletan taim schullam ansaruaim, ja ni brigais uns in freistuppen jäi, ak lausai uns af thama ubilin, unte theina ist theodan gardi, ja machts ja wulthus, in Iwins. Amen. Compare that to early modern English, not old English, early modern English, so like, you know, 17th century, if you will. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for yours is the kingdom and the power and glory forever and ever. Amen. Modern English is very similar. The main difference is that the thou and thee and thine are replaced and then some other, uh, some other rather anachronistic uh, or archaic forms have changed. So here's modern German. Vater unser im Himmel Geheiligt werde dein Name, dein Reich komme, dein Wille geschehe, wie im Himmel so auf Erden. Unser tägliches Brot gib uns heute und vergib uns unsere Schuld, wie auch wir vergeben unseren Schuldigern. Und führe uns nicht in Versuchung, sondern löse uns von dem Bösen. Denn dein ist das Reich und die Kraft und die Herrlichkeit in Ewigkeit. Amen. Then finally Swedish. And after Swedish, I'm going to look at a couple of words that 
are similar in those languages, or that might be different. So here's Swedish. Here's my best attempt at Swedish. You can make fun of me if you want to use Swedish people or Scandinavians. Favor som er i himmelen. Helgot varde dit namen. Tilkomme dit rike. Sve din vilja så som i himmelen så och på jorden. Vart dagliga bröd giv oss idag och förlåt oss våra skulder så som och vi förlåta dem oss skyldiga äro och inled oss icke i frestelse utan fräls oss ifrån ondo. Till riket är dit och makten och härligheten i evighet. Amen. So the first area where these three languages differ or where they have some similarities where Gothic is different is the very first word, father. So in Swedish we have father, in English we have father, which is very similar. Actually, the, the, the Swedish D used to be a the as well. And then in German we have fata, which also used to have a th sound in it or a the sound in it. And in, but in Gothic we have atta. This first sentence, the second word, actually in English it's the first word, in the other forms, in the other languages it's the second word. Uh, this is where English is different. So the word our, the possessive pronoun our, in German it's unser, in Gothic it's unser, which is almost exactly the same. And in Swedish it's different too, it's var. Only Swedish and early modern English have a verb in there, and those verbs are actually quite similar. So in, in Swedish we have er, and in early modern English we have art, which is similar, right? All of these languages have a very similar uh, preposition. In German we have im, which is actually in dem. It's actually a dative case. In, in Gothic we have in. And actually the word himminam is the plural dative case of, of, of heaven. Um, in Swedish we have e, in English we have in, so very, very similar. And then let's talk about that last word, heaven, right? In English we have heaven, and in German we have himmel, in Swedish we have himmelen, very similar. And in Gothic we have himminam, also obviously related. Look at the second line. So in English we have Hallowed be your name, or thy name, if it's early modern English. So, hallowed, the, the, which is a little bit archaic too, right? Uh, in German, we have geheiligt werde dein Name. Geheiligt Heilig is obviously related to hallowed. In Swedish, where we have also helgat, or helgat uh, which is related to that. In Gothic, we have, I think it's pronounced way... Weinai, Weichnai or Weinai. In German we have the word Wein, which uh, is related to the word Weihnachten, Christmas. And the German verb Wein means to sanctify or to consecrate. In the third line we can see a few more differences here. So in English we have your kingdom come. Your kingdom come or your kingdom may come or... or we hope your kingdom will come. That's basically what it means. Uh, it's, it's a little bit archaic, almost poetic, right? So it's not like how people would say it actually in, in everyday conversations. Uh, so in German we have Dein Reich komme. And here we actually have uh, komme is, is, is like the subjunctive, like we wish that it comes. That's really what it means, Dein Reich. So in uh, Swedish we have Til komme Dit rike, and the rike and reich is uh, a realm. In Gothic, it's a little bit different. Qui mai theori nasus veins. So we have veins, which is your, thine, right? Or dine in German, or in um, Swedish, we have dit, which is a little bit different. Uh, we, has, we have qui mai which is obviously related to come or come in German or um, til komme. Til means like to there, come in Swedish. Til means towards or for, basically. Uh, so, and then we have the word theodinasus, theodinasus, uh, 
And that piqued my interest because a similar word appears further down in the Lord's Prayer in the Gothic version. So I had to look up what that actually means. So uh, theod Theodinassos means realm or, or, you know, kingdom or something like that. Theuda means people, or sometimes it's used to refer to the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people, right? Like general people. Interestingly enough, Theuda is obviously related to the German word for Germans, Deutsch. So Deutsch, actually, the German word for German, originally comes from a word that means people. It just means people. Isn't that interesting? People referring to themselves. Yeah, we're the people. And the next two lines are, your will be done on earth as in heaven, or as it is in heaven. So uh, we have the word earth in here, and we have the word heaven in here. Let's see how this translates into these other languages. So in German, that would be, dein Wille geschehe, you will be done. We wish that you will be done. Geschehe. Wie im Himmel so auf Erden. In Swedish that would be. Se din vilja so som i himmelen. So och pa jorden. Himmelen, jorden. Heaven, earth. Himmel, erde. And in Gothic we have. Ver dei vilja. Thanes, sve in himina, ja on nareldai. So we have himina for heaven, himmel, and we have erdai for earth or erde in German. And werdai vilja. Your will should happen, right? Basically, that's what it says. Okay, I'm going to skip around a little bit here with the, with the, with the rest of this. So we have, for instance, here, give us this day our daily bread. So in German, that would be unser tägliches Brot gib uns heute. So in German, the sentence structure is a little bit different. Uh, our daily bread give us today. It's just a different sentence structure, but very similar to the English. And in Swedish, we have Vort dagliga bröd give oss i dag. Our daily bread give us, oss, i dag, today. This day, i dag. In, da, in, in day, literally. In day, in Swedish, basically means today. In Gothic, it's a little different. Kleif. Unsarna thanna sintain nan yif uns himmadaga. And I'm just going to look at the very first word. Kleif. Loaf. Not bread. I guess I didn't have a synonym for bread, or maybe they just didn't use it. Maybe Ulfil, I didn't want to use it. So Kleif is obviously related to loaf, as we have it in English. Also in German, Leip. All right, let's skip to the end here. For yours is the kingdom and the power and glory forever and ever. Amen. So amen is the same in all these languages. It's it's a Hebrew word, basically. And in German, that would be, Denn dein ist das Reich und die Kraft und die Herrlichkeit in Ewigkeit. Amen. It's a little bit different. So let's look at Swedish. So in Swedish, it would be, Tiriket er dit och makten och so here we actually have more similarities to German. We have Riket, Reich. We have Machten, which is similar to the German word Macht, which means also power, actually. So Kraft is more like, like your personal power, whereas Macht is more like your overall ability of making things happen. And then with Herrlichetten, which is very similar to Herrlichkeit in German. And then we have I Ewigkeit, which is very similar to German too. It doesn't look the same, but it's pronounced very similar. Ewigkeit. So let's look at the Gothic, see if there's some similarities between those languages here. We have Unte Theina ist Theodon Gardi, ja Machts, ja Wulfus 
in Eowyn's Amen. So here we have a couple of things. So we have again a word, uh, Theodongarni, that has the Theoda in it, people. Theodongardi, which is uh, again a realm, a kingdom, if you will. Um, I wonder if Gardi is related to our modern word garden. Almost like the garden of the people, where the people are, you know, where, where they exist, I suppose. Um, then we have the word machts, which is similar to the Swedish word macht and the German word macht, right? Uh, and then we have wolfus, which is different. I don't know if that's related to it, but maybe it's related to wealthy in English, right? Wealth, wealthiness. And then we have ewens, ewens, which I think is related to Ewigkeit in German or Ewigkeit in, in um, Swedish, in uh, infinity. Ewig in German means never ending. Anyways, pretty long video. I hope this wasn't too boring. I'm just fascinated with these things. Hopefully a few people who watch my videos find this interesting too. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye. Tschüss.